This is the OBSBOT Tail Air PTZ camera. Let's find out why it's making a splash since its release. What makes it so different? The Tail Air is a PTZ camera which stands for Pan, Tilt, ah! Yo, this guy is a fit. This is my camera review, not that guy's. I honestly think our artificial intelligence guy would have done a better job than me making this video. But honestly, AI is involved in so much nowadays, and this new camera by Ospot, the Tail Air, has AI tracking and object tracking. So I thought throwing that in would be kind of funny. So let's get into more of what this camera can do. There's so much to cover, it's hard to do it in one video. might be for the majority of people. I just want to show you what it's like if you just took the Osba out of the box and you just installed the software you wanted to turn it on. So right now I'm holding the power button. We can see the camera is turning on and as the software opens up in a sec, there it is. Let's hit connect. And then it's going to ask you if you want to go over Wi-Fi or hotspot. And then you would just pick the Wi-Fi and then you would hit your password in and then hit connect. Now it picked up mine because I already did all that, but that's as easy as it would be. And then it just connects right to the software. Now I have my Wi-Fi and my Bluetooth on my computer. Now you want to connect to something like, you know, OBS. The first thing you're going to want to do is click on this little button up here. This turns on the virtual camera. Virtual camera is on and then let's open up OBS. Here it is. And then we're gonna go to sources, video capture. Let's put something in like Osbot Vert camera, hit okay. Now devices, we're gonna go look for the Osbot virtual camera. Here it is. It popped right up already. You can configure anything you'd like, but there's the picture right there. It came right up into the software and that would be as easy to add it to like vMix our stream yard. It's a virtual camera, just like you would pull in the virtual camera from OBS even. So it's, it's pretty simple and straightforward. And we see how easy that is. So let's do the second most common thing people are gonna do, which is just plug the camera in to their PC. There's the camera into the PC. One thing I wanna show you that is fairly important is that you need to make sure you go into the settings and then this is UVC mode. So when you and connect it with USB-C, this has to be on. And this will disable your NDI or RTSP. And you say, okay. Just a tip, I would most of the time, I would use the splitter that comes with this and charge it at the same time that you're using it as a PTZ. Just because PTZs take a little more power and that would be useful. And so now let's go into OBS. Okay, so now we're in OBS. Again, we're gonna go hit sources. We're gonna do a video capture. We're gonna look for Osbot USB, hit okay. All right, so in this case now, because this is plugged in USB, this is gonna be the Osbot tail air camera. So that's how you let, let you know it's plugged in. And there it is came right up. Also, we know the camera connects through NDI. That's a network protocol that you have to buy a license for. It uh, helps you connect uh, audio and video through a network. And the license costs $99, but it's very useful if you, if you need that kind of thing. So it works for wireless and wired. And so I have the license installed. We see the camera over my shoulder now, and I have my other camera that's outside the door and we're gonna connect it through an ethernet. Right here we can see I have a little ethernet switch that is PoE, so that's power over ethernet. So that means that it will give power to the camera and also data. So we're gonna plug that in and then I'm gonna go over on the backside and install this adapter 
and then I'll plug it, it in and we should have connectivity. All right, so I just plugged the camera in. We got great connectivity. It's blinking like crazy right there. And it pulled up this image. It is snowing outside and that's how it works. So I'm connected through ethernet on the cable and the cable itself is this cable is 170 feet so you can go up to 300 feet if you use a poe switch if not the adapter that they sent you you can plug in and that gives you power if you just had a regular ethernet switch we can see how versatile it is you could hang one upside down pan tilt and zoom with it and it just works really well so right now let's look at the third way i'm going to show you how to connect your tail air the tail air has an hdmi mini built into the body of the camera and so you would plug your HDMI cord into the back of the camera. And what I like to use is one of these dongles right here. It goes from an HDMI mini to a full size HDMI. You could just grab your cable and then plug that right into the back side. And your cable will be a little longer, probably like a six foot cord or so. And then you would plug the end of your cable in to a capture card, something like a Camlink Pro. It's very popular. And then you would plug this into the back of your computer and that would allow you to pull right into your streaming or recording software. And you're currently watching me right now on the tail air in HDMI form. The thing I want to talk about is how great this image is. I really think that the tail air with its lens, which really does great things in low light and the overall crispness of the picture, how sharp it is and the focusing is pretty darn good overall. Also, it just does so many things. The colors, the, the white balance, and the overall picture is really good. And I was really surprised and it made me really happy to be able to get a great picture like you're looking at right now. Um, it does a great job. And let me know what you think of the quality of the picture. Leave a comment down below. And moving forward with live streaming, it's only gonna grow more and more each year. And this OBSBOT camera does so many great things for us to connect on any platform that you may be using. The content creator is gonna be able to use this in so many ways. And that's where I see the value in this camera. The ability to connect in so many different ways and have such a great image is a fantastic selling point Along the way, you figure out how you can use the AI for you and the PTZ functions. It just adds to the dynamic of the overall product. And so moving forward, I will be doing more videos about the OBSBOT Tail Air. I will be going over the remote functions and I will also be discussing the software and the app that goes hand in hand with this, which makes it incredibly powerful. So you haven't seen the last video from me on the OBSBOT Tail Air. I think the next thing we're going to do is go into a little tracking, but unfortunately it's just been snowing as you can pretty much see right now. So now I am recording on a Rode Wireless Mic 2 and I'm recording right into the Ozbot. And this is the Ozbot tracking and this is what it looks like recording to the SD card and moving around and having the camera follow me. So I have the tracking on right now. And I could turn that off and on by a gesture. So right now you saw me move back and forth, but if I give it a gesture like this, it stops tracking because it turns green and you can see that it doesn't follow me. I re-engage tracking by just putting my hand back up and then tracking occurs again. And it does a really good job. This is the standard speed of how the tracking works and how it follows. So overall, for an educator to be here and to move around and back and forth, it would be great. On occasion, I've seen it where I've had someone walk behind me and pick up their face, or if you have a large object in front of you and you walk between, it can sometimes pick you up, but it can sometimes get lost. I don't know what you would use it for, but you gotta use it for the right things. You're trying to do seminars or perhaps interviews with people and you're a one man show and it can follow you. I think that's absolutely perfect. And so some of the other things you could do is a gesture like this to zoom in and you could set that zoom to what you like. This is only 1.3. And if you were going to zoom back out, it'd be the same gesture. And then you can also do like a kind of like a framing where you do a double L and you pull yourself in and it will zoom in further on you 
and frame around you. And I know it's accepting these because it blinks to me and says, okay, I see that signal. And then I can go back all the way in and I know it's zoomed all the way back out. And also I can record by giving it the okay sign and I'm actually recording right now. And if I give it the okay sign, it will stop. I would have loved to have gone outside, but I'm from New Jersey and it's been absolutely freezing and snowing every time I have free time. I could do another video just on the tracking also by itself. I'm pretty happy with it. It's on face focus right now. And this is what it looks like. I'm gonna give it the okay and it's gonna stop recording. So the only way I can really show you the object tracking is in the app. So right now I'm actually in the app and I just wanted to show you besides the face detection and human detection and animal detection, you could do object tracking. So you would have to tap on your screen and make a little box on your face like this. And now wherever I will go in this picture, it will follow me. And so sometimes if you're tracking an individual and it's the whole body, it can be tough if you go behind things. So sometimes if you use this object tracking, then it will, it will focus in on a smaller object and track it. I'm going to hold up the remote right now and I'm going to, I'm going to wave this here. You see it moving around, but if I just object track onto the remote, now this camera is following the remote wherever it goes. So I just switched hands or I move it up like this, or I get close to the camera. It puts me out of focus and it's focusing right on the remote. So that is pretty cool that you can object track and then you would double tap to release it and it would stop object tracking and I'll switch back to my face. So here is the other AI function, the object tracking. And I hope you think it's pretty cool because I do. And we're going to go over more of the app software in a future video. So I want to thank you for watching my first video on the Aspot Tail Air. I'm going to do a few more and dive into other applications for this camera. But thanks for hanging in there and watching this. And if it helped you in any way, hit the subscribe and give me a like. It really helps me out a lot as a small YouTuber. Thanks, and I'll see you on the next video.